My brother is retiring, so we are going to Germany with our parents today. Your credit card for the trip, and you know how to party copyright 1996 by Leir and I.V. What a trip this will be. What are you talking about? Just what I said. I mean what the hell do you get when I say just what I said? Please explain. We need to hurry. I get it. We'll go soon. Sorry, I have to move on now. I can go in the area, but will not hear any details as such. Isn't the credit card going to? On a trip with my jobless husband, Jeremy, who thinks he can put it on my credit card for our parents-in-law. Jeremy might be a pain, yeah, but I think I have just found my perfect chance to send his ass on the fast track to de Toothittingville. And he will return from the trip, regretting quite a few things. I'm Emily, a 35-year-old company employee. After graduating from a prestigious university, I landed a job at a major company and have received good evaluations. Despite being only 35, my income is enough to support Jeremy, who doesn't work, and a child if we had one. But that's hypothetical. We've been married for six years and don't have kids yet, though we're thinking about it soon. Blessed with a good job and income, I should be happy in my newly life, but I'm not. The part about having a child is hypothetical, but Jeremy not working isn't. I'm not hungry for dinner because I ate snacks. That's fine, but what about your job search? I didn't go for an interview today. I just stayed home looking at job websites. Jeremy quit his job a year ago and has been job hunting since. To be precise, he's been working part-time but doesn't stick with any job for long. He starts a job, quits soon after, relaxes for a while, then looks for another part-time job. You're looking at part-time jobs again, aren't you? I'm looking at both full-time and part-time. Why don't you stop looking for part-time jobs and focus on finding a full-time position? I know, I know, but there is a right time for everything. I wish Jeremy would find a steady job, but there's a reason he can't be pushed too hard. He quit his last job because of a conflict over work policies with his boss. That boss was notoriously difficult in the office. Jeremy stood up to the boss as the office representative, backed by his colleagues, but when the conflict escalated, his colleagues sided with the boss, not with Jeremy. As a result, Jeremy lost his boss's approval, felt betrayed by his colleagues, and found it hard to stay, so he left the company. Jeremy, dinner's ready. Can you bring it here? After quitting, Jeremy became reclusive, staying in his room. After about three weeks, he started coming out and helping with household chores. All the dishes, really. Thanks, then it's all yours. Yeah, I've got nothing but time, Jeremy said, smiling, but it didn't seem genuine. Yet after another three weeks, he started job hunting. I have an interview today. Is it your top choice? Yeah, I'm going to get this job and start over. I'm rooting for you. Do your best. A month after quitting, Jeremy began job hunting in earnest. But even after a month, he couldn't find a job. Why am I always rejected? Damn it, it's all my previous company's fault. Don't get frustrated. You'll find something good. Of course, I'm frustrated. I did nothing wrong. Jeremy might not be entirely blameless, but what happened at his last job wasn't entirely his fault either. Still, quitting because of interpersonal issues doesn't look good to potential employers. It's like I can't do anything right anymore. That's not true. You have an interview tomorrow. Let's work on your resume. It's pointless. I'm not going tomorrow. Repeated rejections wore Jeremy down, but after a while, he became defiant. One day, I came home to find torn up resumes on the living room floor. Knowing the interview didn't go well, I chose my words carefully. Can you throw that trash in the bin? I'm done. Done with what? Job hunting. We can live on your income, right? I don't need to work. 
Indeed, we could live on my income alone. Some people don't work and do a great job as full-time homemakers, but that's not Jeremy's situation. He's just avoiding unpleasant realities. I understand his reluctance to work after the bad experience at his last job and the unsuccessful job hunt, but we need to address this issue head on. I decided to be patient with Jeremy for a while. Jeremy, you still haven't found a job. What's your plan? I've worked hard before. This is just an extended break. I'm not just resting, I'm studying for the future. That's good to hear. Living near my in-laws, Jeremy's mother Linda and father Brandon started visiting us more often after he quit his job. They were probably worried about him. Hearing that Jeremy was preparing for his next job, they seemed relieved, but that was a blatant lie. The beer will run out today. Can you buy some on your way home? It's running out again. You drink too much. Try to cut down a bit. Fine, I will ask you again. I'll buy it myself. Jeremy wasn't studying or job hunting. He spent his days watching TV and drinking beer. He probably didn't want others to know he was unemployed. If I told my in-laws the truth, it might hurt Jeremy too much. So I decided to stay silent about whatever excuses Jeremy made. But he stopped job hunting for over five months, and I finally decided to speak up. Jeremy, maybe it's time to start job hunting. You seem more settled now. What? It's been less than half a year since the incident at my last job. You want me to work again after what happened? I just thought the break was a bit long. Stop nagging. You can't understand my feelings since your job is going well. I have my own struggles, you know. Everyone has work problems and relationship issues. We all try to solve them. Let's work through this together. I get it. I'll look for a job. Okay. Jeremy walked out in the middle of the conversation. My words seemed to have hurt him, but him agreeing to job hunt seemed like progress. I decided to apologize when he was feeling better. I got a job because of your nagging. That's great. Where? At a nearby supermarket. So you'll need to learn and work hard, right? It's just part-time. No need to work too hard. Part-time or not, even part-time is a job. Do you have a problem with that? I wanted to say something to Jeremy, but maybe getting a little work could be a step toward his recovery. I decided to watch and see. I'm home. Jeremy, you're back. How's the job? I quit the supermarket part-time. Why, it hasn't been that long. A college student there was being bossy, telling me to always put the vegetable boxes at the bottom in storage. It felt like harassment. That student was likely just teaching Jeremy the job. In the workplace, even a college student is a senior. Jeremy kept finding and quitting jobs, unable to stick with any. So Jeremy has been unable to keep a job for long, and it's already been a year. Jeremy, what job are you doing now? I'm working part-time at a pub. I've never worked in food and beverage before, but it's interesting, and I think I finally found my calling. Really? That's great, but isn't the income from a part-time job in a restaurant kind of low? That's fine. I'm currently apprenticing, aiming to go independent. So you plan to own your place someday? Exactly. The income's small now, but I'm working hard for my goal. Then take this. Treat yourself to something nice for once. Jeremy still put on a good show in front of his parents, but as always, it was all lies. He quit the pub job four days after this conversation, lying and even taking an allowance from his parents this time. I couldn't help but feel disappointed in my husband, so I decided to be firmer than before. Hey, Jeremy, later, please. I'm at a good part in the movie. You can pause it. I grabbed the remote control from the table, paused the movie, and forced a conversation. It's just pressing when you pause at the best part. What is it, Jeremy? You're 38, right? 
you know that's prime working age. Don't you think about the future? Spending all day at home, drinking, and just watching TV. There are plenty of 38-year-olds not working. Many people enjoy life without a job. True, work isn't everything, but those people have something else they're dedicated to. Do you have something like that? Yeah, yeah, you're upset about me not working. I'll look for another part-time job. Jeremy seemed intent on only working part-time. Considering his reasons for leaving his job and his struggles with job hunting, I had been careful not to hurt him. But it was time for Jeremy to bounce back. I needed to be stricter. One day at work, I got a text from Jeremy. Dad's retiring, so we're going to Germany to celebrate. Starting today, borrowing your platinum card got to splurge on your credit card. I panicked and called him immediately. What do you mean, a trip? Just what I said. I don't get it. Just what I said. Please explain. So many things are wrong here. It's fine to celebrate Brandon's retirement, but he should have consulted me before using my money and borrowing the credit card. More like stealing. And why am I paying for a trip to Germany that I'm not going on? Jeremy was probably bragging to his parents, claiming the money was from his savings, not my credit card. Thinking about it infuriated me, but one thing Jeremy said caught my attention. You said you borrowed a credit card, the one for our house. Yeah, why do I have a platinum card? Some people think you need a high income for it, but that's not true. Credit history, stable income, and other factors matter, and it's attainable in your 40s. The annual fee is high, but I use it for the benefits and points. However, that credit card is in my wallet, so you took the credit card from home. Yeah, so I'm counting on you for the payment. Jeremy, elated about his trip to Germany, was speaking to me in a provocative tone. I had been patient with Jeremy for a long time, but this seemed like a good opportunity. Jeremy thought he was clever, taking my credit card and being all cheerful, but he was in for a surprise. What are you doing? We need to go. Got it. I'm coming. Sorry, I need to move on now. I'll hear the details when I get back. Just one more thing, the credit card you took won't work. What? That can't be right. It's in Emily's name, and the expiry date is this month. It's short, but it shouldn't be a problem. You're lying, right? Emily, you're lying to stop me from using the card, aren't you? Yes, it expires this month. That's why I've already received a new credit card. What does that mean? So I have two credit cards to use for a while now. Sometimes with my credit card, when the new one is activated, the old one stops working. And I've already started using the new card. So the one you took won't work. You're kidding, right? If you don't believe me, I can send you the URL to the credit card website. Or you could just try using the card. It would be amusing to see you try to pay with a card that doesn't work. This credit card really won't work. Hey, hurry up. I heard his parents calling him from the background of the phone call, but Jeremy, realizing the credit card wouldn't work, seemed too flustered to hear them. What should I do? I told them I'd pay for everything except the round-trip travel. Oh, they covered the flight. Yes, Dad felt bad about having all the trip costs covered. What should I do? I'm about to take a cab, and I don't even have money for that. That's not my problem. You said you would pay for everything but the flight. If so, using my credit card in the first place was wrong. Pay with your own money. How can I? I don't have any money. Right. Jeremy, you haven't been working seriously. It's your fault for trying to look good, taking your parents on a trip without money. I'm at work, so I have to hang up now. I just wanted to tell him about the credit card. Wait. I hung up and returned to work. Jeremy, unable to pay even for the cab, would have to be honest with his parents. 
That night, after I finished work, I had a call from Laura. I heard from Jeremy. He tried to pay with your credit card and lied about working. Sorry for the trouble. No, don't apologize, Laura. I'm sorry for the inconvenience about the credit card. Are you okay with the money? We'll cover this trip's cost when we get back. I'll make Jeremy apologize and find a job immediately. I'm sorry, Laura, but I'm considering divorcing Jeremy. Divorce because of this. It's part of it, but Jeremy has been taking money from me for a while. What? I stopped giving Jeremy money to curb his drinking. He started a part-time job and bought his own alcohol, but the salary from part-time work shouldn't be enough for daily drinking. Jeremy was taking money from my wallet to buy alcohol. Over a year, he repeatedly stole amounts ranging from $7 to $70. The sum became significant. I had been strict with Jeremy, hoping he would eventually turn things around. But when he stole my credit card for his trip, it wasn't just about $75 anymore. This leap in the MTH he took convinced me that he had no intention of improving. I respect your decision. Should I tell Jeremy about the divorce? Could you just tell him I want a divorce? We'll discuss the rest when he returns home. About an hour later, the next morning after my call with Laura, Jeremy called. He must have heard about the divorce from Laura, but I had asked her to wait until he was back to discuss it. Too exhausted, I decided not to answer his call. The next morning, after returning from work, I found Jeremy at home. He had cut his trip short. I'll work properly now. Please don't leave me, he pleaded as I entered the living room. Seeing Jeremy, he immediately apologized. His regrets seemed sincere but came too late. He had a whole year to change yet, still asked for another chance. I had warned him repeatedly, yet he squandered every opportunity. I'm not going to give Jeremy another chance because he gave up on me. My mind is made up. Can you leave, please? Don't say that. If you don't leave, should I call someone to help you pack your things? I'll move out only if you can afford the rent here. Jeremy fell silent. He didn't even have the money for next month's rent, let alone an income. My words and the reality of the impending divorce made him realize the severity of his situation. With nothing to take, Jeremy seemed to be leaving the house, probably heading to his parents' place. I thought about asking if he had money for transportation, but Jeremy isn't a child. He should manage his own affairs, money or not. I sadly watched Jeremy leave the house. After leaving, Jeremy went to his parents' house. Later, I received a call from Linda. My parents-in-law let Jeremy stay for one night, but then asked him to leave the next day. They thought he might become too reliant on them if he stayed. Creating a situation where he must fend for himself was perhaps their intention. It must have been painful as parents to send their son away, but they made a tough decision for Jeremy's recovery. Kicked out from his parents' home, Jeremy came back to our house, pleading with me. Please help me. I've got nowhere to go and no money. That's the result of your own actions. You need to handle it yourself. Everyone deals with their hardships. Maybe sometimes it's necessary to ask for help, but all you have done in the past year is abandon your responsibilities and do as you please. I didn't let Jeremy into the house and turned him away from the doorstep. The divorce eventually went through. Jeremy was reluctant, but with the support of his parents, it happened quicker than expected. I have no idea what happened to Jeremy after we split up. He's probably still jumping from one job to another and making excuses for himself. I used to think I'd feel lonely without him, but to my surprise, I didn't feel lonely at all. Instead, I felt a weight lifted off my shoulders. Living with Jeremy had been incredibly stressful. His attitude and constant need for reassurance kept me on edge. I was always walking on eggshells, afraid of saying something that might upset him. Now without him around, 
I don't have to worry about that anymore. Without Jeremy, my life has become much more comfortable. I hadn't realized just how much of a burden our relationship had been. I was constantly trying to support him, both emotionally and financially, and it drained me. Now I can focus on myself and my own well-being. I'm relieved that I didn't let Jeremy drag me down with him. I was always trying to help him, hoping he would change, but it never happened. Letting go of that responsibility has been freeing. I no longer have to cater to anyone else's needs or deal with anyone else's problems. I can finally live my life on my own terms without having to accommodate anyone else. It's a fresh start and I'm embracing it fully. I have more time for myself, more energy to pursue my own interests, and a clearer mind to think about my future. I'm grateful for this new chapter in my life, free from the stress and worry that Jeremy brought into it.